Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogue's European Outlook. In today's video, we will look at the details for the upcoming week, the work week anyway, and end of the weekend. As well as that, we'll look in a wee bit more detail at what's going on within the stratosphere also, because um, there is a uh, very interesting thing that's going on at the moment, and it'll be interesting um, even more so as we progress into the month of March. Any kind of stratospheric effects will not occur until... We get into the the month of March uh, proper, but uh, first and foremost, it's a bit of a an ECMWF special today. Uh, we will look firstly at the snow prospects over the next uh, several days here. You can see that uh, there's nothing particularly uh, significant to write home about. We do have, however, Wednesday and then the Thursday, we do have the prospects of seeing some high elevation snow. So affecting some high road routes across parts of, uh, possibly even parts of Northern Ireland, the Northwest Republic, and into even the north of England as we progress th Wednesday and Thursday as colder air moves in from the north here, even northern portions of Iberia. You can see here we've got some snow. Then as we progress through the rest of the week and into the weekend here, you can see that snow lingering over more northern portions of the UK at high elevations, some snow in the central portions of Europe, Germany, Poland, seeing a reasonable increase in snow cover, parts of northern Iberia, southeast and south France. And uh, that is um, quite interesting to see the growth in the snow cover across parts of mainland Europe. So let's have a look at the finer de details and go back to the overview chart. Very windy conditions during, again, once again, overnight last night and then through the course of today. We had a frontal system and gale force winds blowing through the Northern Isles and even the far north mainland here. Even winds here at the house, 20, 30 miles per hour um, through the course of today. We had 40, even close to 50 mile an hour gusts during uh, last night. So some pretty windy conditions across the north but also right across the board really it was quite windy as you can see here quite a squeeze in the isobars thanks to an area of deep low pressure over the norwegian sea and an area of high pressure 1032 millibars over the near continent here of course it's that squeeze in the pressure field that increases the strength of the wind but let's play through the loop here and you can see what takes place now let's actually have a look at the north the Europe and the North Atlantic view actually. So there's that area of low pressure. The culprit being, of course, the pressure differential between the low uh, to the north and the high to the south. And of course, winds increase along that boundary also. So um, that was the reason for the strong winds during the overnight period. But as we play through the loop here, you notice here that we do have an area of low pressure kind of taking that more northerly track. So we're well within a warm sector at the moment here. Temperatures tomorrow afternoon may push 14, even 15 Celsius in parts of northeast Aberdeenshire thanks to the fern effect. Strong westerly winds blowing over the, the Grampians um, and even the Cairngorms allowing the temperature to rise downstream of that. Places such as Aboyne and, uh, you know, um, you know, even Aberdeen actually may see temperatures rise quite significantly thanks to this. Uh, setup that we've got going at the moment so milder in place and of course you've got the influence of the wind but it's as we start to go through Tuesday and then the Wednesday we've got another area of low pressure positioned fairly close to the system that we've got uh, we've seen over the last 24 hours frontal system moves through and that introduces something a bit colder from the north during the course of Wednesday, so we increase the chance of seeing wintry precipitation, possibly a wintry mix, even the low levels. That will feel quite different to what we've got at the moment here, where temperatures have been firmly above average, of course. Then as we progress, so we'll get that initial push of colder air from the north. Then as we progress through the second half of the week, what we've essentially got is we've got another frontal system that moves in during Thursday. And then, of course, that introduces another shot of uh, colder air. But um, it's as that system then moves uh, kind of south, we could increase the winds once again across the far north. Wintry precipitation primarily over high ground. And then it's the orientation here of this area of high pressure, the kind of uh, northeast to southwest oriented angle, the axis of the high kind of will allow cold northeasterly winds to then kick in down the eastern side of the British Isles here 
So showery precipitation, some mix of winteriness over high parts of perhaps Yorkshire, Northumberland, the, the borders and whatnot. We could see some winter precipitation running in on that northeasterly wind. Some pretty chilly feel to that wind, may I add. And then, of course, as we progress through the weekend coming up, we've got an area of high pressure that kind of parks itself bang slap over the UK. A fairly uh, significant area of high pressure. You notice here uh, the pressure rising over the British Isles, which is quite interesting. Then as we go towards the final days of the month and into the first few days of March, the ECMWF is now starting to hint at this area of high pressure, elongated, stretched out between Shetland to the west and parts of uh, Ukraine, the Black Sea, to the east here. That would indicate to me that we're going to start to see a little bit more of a kind of easterly component, especially to the south of Europe. Not a great deal over the UK, but nonetheless, that this is now starting to show some changes taking place. Notice here that we've got the high to the north, low pressure now stuck underneath to the south here. So you notice that, that we are starting to see changes taking place in the pattern. And again, this I don't believe is anything to do with the stratospheric warming situation or the, 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 you know, the true SSW that we've got going. But more so the behaviour of the Manjulian oscillation progressing from phase 7 into phase 8. I think that is the primary reason why we're starting to see some changes taking place in the overall pattern. Now if we look at the 850 temperature chart here. You can see that we don't have a great deal of cold air to play with, hence why we don't have any snow at low levels. Now, over the next few days, that area of low pressure kind of moving up towards the north. West of the UK means that we've got mild air coming in with that position of low pressure. And, of course, with the winds uh, blowing over the hills, we could see temperatures rise quite significantly. We've already seen, only in recent days, temperatures as high as 17.2 per shore. Um, so um, we we just remain in this very, very mild theme. Then as we go Wednesday into Thursday, we'll have the first uh, shot of chilly air coming in uh, from the northwest here. Then as we progress through the period, we've got another shot of cold air behind another cold front. But then as we progress into the weekend here, you can see that here that that area of high pressure centers over the UK colder coming and, and getting drawn off the continent uh, with this area of high pressure so it's kind of pulling some of this colder over scandinavia into the southeastern half of the british isles so we have this five minus five and five thousand feet here kind of drifting underneath that area of high pressure into england and wales as you can see here and then it's as we progress through the course of the weekend that area of high pressure becomes larger, more stretched out across the central portion of Europe. And then we have some colder air coming around the bottom side of that area of high pressure. But you can see here that it's not a great deal of colder over the continent here, but we've got this little kind of pool of colder that kind of drifts underneath that area of high pressure across the southern half of the British Isles here. So that is the general theme as we go through the course of this upcoming week into the weekend and into early portions of, of the of March here. So quite interesting of course to see. Um and let's have a look now specifically at the um the stratosphere. And this is the, the current 10 millibar temperature profile here and pretty much the polar vortex has been completely wiped off the charts here. So we've had the major sudden stratospheric warming we've seen the winds reverse from west to east to east to west. I actually did the special video that I've done talking primarily about uh, some of the dynamics that go into place with regards to the stratosphere. I actually kept saying the wrong thing by saying that the winds go from west to east. I'm talking nonsense. I do apologize about, about that. The normal, when you've got a strong polar vortex, winds are blowing from west to east. But when you reverse them, they go from east back to west. And then, of course, the, the big golden question is, do we start to see... The, the those reversed winds coming down through the stratosphere and then affecting the troposphere. If it does affect the troposphere, you start to see more easterly winds build up a pressure across the Arctic region. And we'll look at that uh, specifically in just a second. 
because some of the models are now starting to pick up and some interesting things going on. So this is the 10 millibar level. This is the current setup here down at 70 HPA. So this is the very lower portion of the stratosphere and you've got some very strong warmth and blocking now starting to take show, showing up stretched from the east coast of Asia right across the top of the pole and into the Baffin Straits here. Now, as we go through the next 10 days here, so this is a, basically um, what the 2nd of March, and you can still see the very strong blocking at 70 HPA right over the Arctic region. What does that tell me? It tells me that we should have high latitude blocking reflecting in the 500 millibar pattern. And the Arctic Oscillation, now the model, the GFS model, uh, and this is the ensemble, is now starting to pick up on the Arctic Oscillation going into negative territory. And that is uh, very important indeed. Now, the North Atlantic Oscillation, very interesting. The model, the very same model, is indicating it going negative. Now, if we look at the ECMWF weeklies, you can see the reflection now being picked up in this model at the 500 millibar level. So this is the 500 millibar dual potential height anomaly chart here. And you can see as I play through this loop that we do have these in, in intrusions of cold air from the north, but nothing particularly to write home about. But pay attention as we go through the rest of February into the early portion of March, pay attention to the area of high pressure. Notice it's now starting to build to the north of the UK, to the north of Europe here, we're starting to pick up a negative over Iberia and northwestern portions of Africa. As we continue to play through the loop here, you notice the buildup of pressure across the North Atlantic, across the Arctic region, and we're reversing the overall height field to the negative Arctic Oscillation, negative North Atlantic Oscillation, and this is essentially setting the show up for what I believe will be a cold march. The problem that you can have is the blocking that uh, that essentially allows the, 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 the southward discharge of cold air. Remember the polar vortex being strong? All that cold air is bottled up within the high portions of the stratosphere. Once you reverse the winds and that propagates down through the column, you're then essentially allowing the southward push of that cold down into the lower stratosphere and essentially if it connects up with the troposphere you get the cold air that's been stationed bottled up over the top of the of the stratosphere into the troposphere so you're essentially emptying the polar vortex into the troposphere and then you get the tropospheric response but it's important to know that where the blocking takes place is very critical we could have the blocking set up almost over the british isles we don't see any cold weather 2019 was seen tremendous amounts of cold air in the North America. The UK and Western Europe did not see that take place. So it's important to always remember that no given sudden stratospheric warming delivers 2018s or 2010s and whatnot. But it is interesting nonetheless to see the modelling indicating the big positive over the North Atlantic, over the Arctic region, and the negative hooking up between North America and Europe. That is a classic cold pattern for the month of March. I think it could take towards the end of week one of March before we really truly get the effects of all this taking place here. But it's a complicated um, you know, process that takes a couple of weeks after the event. Now, you also notice here, th these are the main winds uh, within the stratosphere so we've got the, the initial uh, reversal in the mean winds uh, now blowing from east to west then you notice here there's a bit of a recovery we start to see the westerly winds picking up once again but then we've got this next dip this kind of double dip of negative winds here and that is quite a rare occurrence by the way this kind of um uh, this double negative uh, and this double wind reversal within the stratosphere over top of the pole here. So it certainly looks as if the modeling is very, very uh, adamant now that we're going to see this kind of uh, pullback of the uh, of the, the, the zone of winds. Then they'll, they'll go back in the reverse once again. So this, this secondary wave of warming reverses the winds at the zonal uh, level once again. So 
very interesting times as always please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and i'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more bye for now